Well, let's move on to this. Uh, next up, it's time for my political spotlight. And on there, my political guest, Tory MP, Sir Christopher Chope. Christopher was the first elected in 1983 where he became an MP for the constituency of Southampton Itchen. Uh, since then, he has uh, been a powerhouse in politics, being a figurehead during the premiership of Margaret Thatcher. He was also awarded a Knight Bachelor for his dedication to political and public service. And outside of politics, Christopher is a happily married man and a father of two. So let's welcome on board Christopher Chope, Conservative MP for Christchurch and East Dorset. Christopher, thank you so much for joining me. So, Christopher, I wanted to talk to you. Thank you for asking me. Uh, well, it was good to talk to you. I wanted to ask you, so what, what made you get into politics in the first instance? I, I, I think I, I really got involved in politics at university when I found that people weren't articulating my point of view. So in a debating society where nobody's expressing your point of view, you've got to get up and express it yourself. So that's really how I got started. And as, and as a young person, what was, what was your childhood like? And who, who were your political heroes in, in all of that? Well, I don't think I was politically aware, really, much until about, funny enough, we were in Budapest the, the last month, uh, because my best friend at school when I was about 10 uh, was, um, his father was in the British embassy in Budapest at the time of the Hungarian uprising. And so we were getting a running commentary from him about what was happening. And I think that was the first time I became politically aware. And with, with regard to the kind of roles that you have done, uh, talk to me about the, the jobs that you've held whilst, whilst in political office. What have, you, what have you been up to? Well, I think that probably one of my most interesting early jobs was to be leader of Wandsworth Council in South London. Uh, because um, when I was first elected to Wandsworth, there were 58 socialists and 12 conservatives. And uh, that gave uh, us conservatives quite a lot of uh, scope for um, debate and discussion. And four years later, we won control of the council. And a year after that, I was leader. And that was great because I was able to put into practice a lot of my ideas for uh, enabling people to be able to buy their own homes. Uh, ensuring that the number of empty houses was much reduced uh, and uh, enabling the price of local services to be significantly reduced by reducing the costs of provision. And that meant we, I think one year, we um, reduced the staff by uh, almost 20%. What was it like then? Because you received a, a night bachelor. Talk to me about that, because that's, that's quite, a, quite a good big accolade. Well, it was a, it, it's it's um, something which um, you know, obviously my my wife and family were were, were delighted at, as as was I, and and we had a fa fabulous day um, at uh, Windsor Castle with uh, Her Late Majesty, and uh, it's one of those occasions one will never forget. So, what, now if you look at the uh, Tory Party, what do you think as you look on at them? I mean, I know what I think. <laughs> Well, there was a, there's a very interesting cartoon in one of the national newspapers today, which you may have seen, uh, which is somebody going out canvassing, knocking on a door and saying, um, are you voting Conservative? If so, why? And I thought that that was actually um, quite telling, because I think that uh, the party has lost touch with a lot of its natural supporters, yeah. and we have disappointed them by not achieving as much with our majority of 80 plus as we should have done. And there's still time left to redeem the situation. But I, I think that uh, we've got a, a very um, steep hill to climb in order to re restore um, the respect and, and if not adoration of the, of the electorate. And what, what about the, this hounding of Boris Johnson, this as if they can't let go? of him and they just really want to make sure that he doesn't ever, ever, ever work in politics again. Do you not think perhaps they should just get on with running the country and stop focusing on the, this whole problem? No, uh, oh, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the, one of the big issues in, in politics for me is you've got to have, retain a sense of proportion. And I think that uh, what's been happening over with, with uh, Boris is, is totally disproportionate because mm. 
here is the person who actually uh, was, uh, he secured that, that amazing uh, victory in 2019. Prior to that, he had broken the deadlock in Parliament and, and persuaded the SNP to support the dissolution of Parliament. He then secured Brexit, and uh, then um, he was absolutely in the forefront in leading the Western world in its uh, assault on uh, Putin and its defense of Ukraine. So uh, those are enormous achievements in anybody's book. I mean, I think most politicians would be very happy to have just one of those under their belt. And um, I think it, it's, it is actually tragic because he, all his instincts were that you should let people um, do what they want to do themselves, take responsibility for their own lives. And he got involved after having his uh, serious bout of COVID. He got involved in, I'm afraid, interfering in people's lives, uh, making lots of rules and regulations which, in which his heart wasn't really there. And then, uh, obviously, um, he behaved um, in a way that gave rise to allegations that he was rather cavalier about supporting those uh, regulations. But, but even a lot of the people, accused, I mean, look, Bernard Jenkins is now, uh, people are starting to investigate him now because he apparently may have broken lockdown rules as well. Um, do you think that the Tory party actually, because you mentioned as though you think they have a chance, do you believe they genuinely have a chance to, to win the election? Well, everybody's got a chance of winning an election until it's held. Um, and the volatility in the electorate has never been greater. And I don't think uh, we've got a situation where, although people may have fallen out of love with the Conservative Party, I don't think they've fallen in love with the Labour Party and Keir Starmer at all, which means that there's still room to win those people back. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I know my colleagues are trying to do as well. Well, listen, Christopher Chope, thank you so much for joining me. It's always good to talk to you. Uh, good to hear all about you. Of course, it's Christopher Chope. He's a uh, Tory uh, party uh, minister. He's an MP and he's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant person to speak to. Thank you so much, Christopher. Lovely to talk to you.